Okay, so moving on, here are some of the differences between lyophilic, lyophobic, and amphiphilic or association colloids. For that of our um, lyophilic or um, yeah, lyophilic colloids, they are basically dispersed, or the dispersed phase contains large organic molecules. Okay, so this one's organic. Okay, it contains orga large organic molecules lying within colloidal range. Their molecules are of, or the molecules of the dispersed phase is solvated. So, um, it only means all the molecules of the dispersed phase, they dissolved into the dispersing medium. And then, the dispersion are generally stable. Okay, so they are generally stable in the presence of electrolytes. On the other hand, for our lyophobic colloids, dispersed phase contains inorganic particles. Okay, so they contain inorganic particles, small interaction or solvation between the particles and the dispersion medium. These dispersions are unstable. Okay, they are unstable, even in small concentrations of electrolytes. On the other hand, for our amphiphilic or association colloids, dispersed phase consists of aggregates of small organic molecules, okay, or ions whose size is, size is below the colloidal range. Hydrophilic or lipophilic portion of the molecule is solvated, depends on the solvent system or the dispersing medium used. Some can be reduced by addition of electrolytes. And then, we have also here the word thixotropy. So, for a thixotropy, it is a phenomenon wherein some gels become fluid on agitation only to resume their solid or semi-solid state after remaining undisturbed for a period of time. So when we say thixotropy, it is basically a reversible behavior or yeah, a reversible behavior of certain gels that liquefy when they are shaken, steered or otherwise disturbed, and they reset after being allowed to stand. Examples of our gels that um that possess this thixotropic um, property, we have honey, we have ketchup. Also in painting industries, when painting, over time, the paint can thicken and occasionally, it is necessary to steer the paint in order to make it thinner and easier to manipulate. Then, for our thixotropic behavior, the viscosity decreases with stress over time, okay? So, we have here this one, viscosity, and then we also have their stress application over time, okay? So, we have here thixotropy. Thixotropy, again, the viscosity decreases with stress over time, or basically, the thixotropic liquids decrease in viscosity and as stress over time increases. Okay, so we have here viscosity decreased as stress over time increases. And then on the other hand, we also have another type of behavior of our gels. We call this one as rheopectic behavior. When we say rheopectic behavior, the viscosity increases with stress over time. Okay? So, rheopectic liquids increase in viscosity as there is an increase of stress over time. Okay? So, that's for rheopectic. Rheopectic liquids Increase in viscosity as stress over time increases. Examples of our thixotropic um, 
gels, we have here your honey. Okay? So, for honey, you basically need to keep stirring your honey and then your honey becomes liquid. And then for rheopectic, on the other hand, an example for that is our um, creams. So, for our creams, the longer you whip it, the thicker it gets. Okay? So, again, let us remember... Thixotropic liquids decrease in viscosity as stress over time increases, while rheopectic liquids increase in viscosity as stress over time increases. Then, we have here the advantages of our topical gels. So, for our topical gels, they avoid gastrointestinal drug absorption, difficulties caused by gastrointestinal pH, and enzymatic activity and drug interaction with food and drinks and can be used to avoid the first pass effect or the initial pass of the drug substance through the systemic and partial circulation following gastrointestinal absorption, avoiding the deactivation by digestive and liver enzymes. So, um, for our second advantage, we have they're less greasy. So, for our topical gels, they are less greasy in nature and can be easily removed from the skin. They are also cost-effective for the dose, reduction of dose as compared to the oral dosage form. And then, another advantage is that we have here localized effect with minimum side effect. So, there is a probability of side effect to be reduced since gels are used externally and they provide local action. For the disadvantages of our topical gels, basically, we have here poor permeability of some drugs through the skin. And then another is possibility of allergenic reactions. They may cause skin allergy during application. Third, very small plasma concentration for action. There can be, um, our topical gels can be used only for drugs which require very small plasma concentration for action. And then, last disadvantage for our topical gels is that for the particle size, the larger the particle size of the drugs, they are not easy to absorb through the skin. So drugs of larger particle size do not absorb easily through the skin. So those are the major disadvantages of our topical gels.